In a span of about five minutes, two SEC teams were handed stunning upset losses on Friday, with the conference ultimately recording just a 2-5 and five record in seven favored matchups. It just means more. You are Locked On College Basketball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, folks? Happy Friday night, Saturday morning for those of you listening the next day. Welcome into this live postcast episode of the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, a daily national college hoop show, part, of course, of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your co-hosts. He's Isaac Shade. I'm Andy Patton, and we are coming to you live after another fantastic game or day of NCAA tournament games on Friday. We are through the first round of the NCAA tournament down to 32 teams. Today's episode of Locked On College Basketball, folks, it's brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things just a little bit further? Have you ever wondered what adventure could be just around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. Isaac, we got a ton to cover today. We're going to talk about the SEC's struggles in this NCAA tournament and that wild sequence where Florida and Auburn were both playing at the same time. We're also going to talk about the 12 seeds over the five seeds. Had a couple of those today. We're going to talk about what that means. We're also going to talk about Purdue. They got off the schneid, ended up getting a victory over 16 seed Grambly. Zach Eady had a monster game. We'll talk about that in the rest of the games. But Isaac, we also kind of want to just take a look at an overview of what the picture looks like with the 32 teams we have now. What's the conference representation? We didn't see any 15 seeds upset two seeds for the first time in, I think, three years. We didn't see any of those. What does this kind of field look like now that we're down to 32 teams? Yeah, Andy, this is one of my favorite things to always look at is like at the end of each round, let's let's bring it all together. As you said, for the first time since, what did we say, 2019, mm -hmm. got all four ones and all four twos. Yes, it had been three straight years of a 15 seed in the round of 32. None of that this year. In terms of conference representation, Big 12 wins the day. They've got five teams in. Three conferences have four. ACC, Big 10, Pac-12. Like we all projected. Right? As we all projected the <laughs> ACC to go 4-0 in the main part of the bracket and the Pac-12 to go legit 4-0, right? Yeah. Um, Big wow. East and SEC both have three. That's the big shocker there with the SEC. Uh, A10 and Mountain West both have two. And then and then there's multiples with just one team, Horizon, Ivy, Sunbelt, in 9.6 seconds to whack, and the WCC Conference. Andy and I are recording as Grand Canyon's up nine on St. Mary's with just under 10 seconds to go. So we feel comfortable with that. Every Andy, Andy caught this. Every multi-bid league that had... Uh, Every multi-bid league, excuse me, had at least one team advance except the American boo for them. <laughs> seed aggregate, Andy, has is a 199. So basically you take all the seeds that are in the round of 32, add it all up, and that comes out to 199, which is the seventh highest ever in the, um, in the round of 32, dating back to expansion in 1985. 2016, by the way, was the highest, 215. Andy, wow. crazy stuff. We've got 18 double-digit seed teams in the round of 32 the highest was also 2016 when we had 10 insane stuff for this year it's so much fun to see those 12 5 upsets at the end of the day we saw a lot of 11 6 upsets as well in this tournament but really want to focus on what we saw in the sec one of those 11 6 upsets was an sec team on thursday of course oregon defeating south carolina but it was back-to-back -to -back tough days for the sec conference uh, and and to at points today on Friday, it was looking really bad. They did end up getting salvaged at the end of the day, Texas A&M, with a big blowout victory over Nebraska, kind of the, the most surprising, perhaps, result uh, in terms of a, a victory result for the SEC that we saw. Uh, A&M, the worst three-point shooting team in this field, went nuclear from deep, of course. <laughs> Why wouldn't they? It's March. Uh, and, and took down Nebraska. And then Alabama handled their business against Char Charleston. I think they had 109 points, some insane point total in that game. Uh, before that had happened, though, 
The SEC was one in five in this NCAA tournament. Uh, the only win was Tennessee taking down St. Peter's, which was entirely expected, of course. Uh, so it was a really, really rough start to the tournament. They did redeem themselves a bit with those Alabama and AM victories. But Isaac, the insanity was in that mid-afternoon, I guess, probably evening for East Coast folks. For me, it was the mid-afternoon. Yeah, dude, I was um, eating supper while you're yeah, that's right. it was dinner there. time for you. <laughs> for me, I was sitting on my couch in the afternoon. I had a big, the big screen up watching Auburn and Yale. I had the small screen up watching Florida and Colorado. And I was like, I I don't know which I don't know which game to unmute. I don't know which game to keep my eyes on. Like everything's happening all at once in both these games. Uh, of course, both those those SEC teams were unable to pull off the victory despite both being the favored team. Florida, the seven seed, loses 102 to 100 to Colorado. Uh, Auburn, the four seed, loses to a 13 seeded Yale team. Very very physical game there. Uh, Isaac, I'll let you kind of pick which of those two games you want to go with first because it was a uh, pretty insane to watch them go down at the same time. Well, Andy, uh, what's funny is I'm I'm actually going to go to the Yale Auburn game because I had been split screening them. I got that YouTube TV so I can go quad box, but I was split screening these two. I went only to the Auburn Yale game mm -hmm. because uh, Colorado had such a good lead on Florida that I was like, oh, well, I'll just go away from that one. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, Florida came back to 99 97. And so it was really confusing. So let's go to Auburn. Like this, mm -hmm. Andy, was a bonkers thing. Um, where we got down to 2.30, and Auburn, who had had a, what, seven-point ha seven halftime lead, yeah. um, then Yale was able to come back, tie it up with 70. I was joking. I think the, the coolest thing about this is always we're like, who's going to be the new household name? Mm -hmm. And we all know what we got on Thursday. And it's just funny because I, I think I had tweeted something to the effect of, um, oh gosh, it's totally gone now. And I'm on locked on college basketball, Twitter. Um, are you looking for Jacob Golke's name? Yeah. I was like, I was just trying to remember how I had said it. Like, mm -hmm. um, anyway, yeah, it was like how many of us before Thursday knew the name, knew the words Golke and Pulakitas, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, like I, I just absolutely love it. This dude went talking about going nuclear Pulakitas. Mm -hmm. Lakitas, excuse me, had 28 uh, at that point. Go Yale's up 73, 72, and then just does everything they need to do down the stretch. And Andy, I, I you know, hey, do you see Bruce Pearl in the hallway just in tears afterwards? You know how much he cares about this. But that's March, man, and it was wild. I cannot believe the Auburn Tigers are out of this tournament. They had been the uh, computer darlings all all season long. And I think coming into the day, they were undefeated outside of quad one. Mm -hmm. And then they go and lose a quad two game for the first time in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, this is a really nice performance from Yale, but really Auburn struggled in a significant way down the stretch. They had so many opportunities in the final 30 seconds of this game. Katie Johnson gets that foul, gets that and one, uh, misses the free throw. Auburn ties up the rebound. They get the ball back. They go up. They have a blob play. They get wide open, fouled, miss the free throws, get the offensive rebound, can't get a shot back up. Just really devastating if you're an Auburn like fan. Like the three at the buzzer. Yeah. If that goes in. They win this basketball game. Yeah, it was really? devastating to watch them continue to not be able to get those final shots. But again, shout out to Yale. Shout out to the Ivy League. They've done this a couple of times now in the last few years. Obviously, Princeton with their upset win last year. Now we got Yale doing it here against Auburn. Uh, good stuff from the Ivy League. But uh, the, the Power Six matchup was incredibly, unbelievably fun, exciting basketball. We talked about Alabama and Charleston, and we predicted that those two teams would both put up 90-something plus points, which is totally what we got in that game. But we didn't expect Florida and Colorado to be two teams dropping 100 triple digits on insane efficiencies. I think both teams shot over 50% from the field, over 40% from three, over 80% from the free throw line. Just shot making after shot making after shot making. Sort of felt like it was going to be a game that's going to end purely based on who has the basketball left last and guess what that is how the basketball game ended Colorado got the ball last KJ Simpson got off a shot that was a little bit controversy on whether he cleared himself some space using illegal means by pushing off but did he, got he Andy, off. I want your answer did he I I wouldn't have called it okay why not I wouldn't have called it I, I think I hate calling 
I hate calling fouls in that situation unless they're egregious. They have to be very obvious. I think that's a 50-50 call. And I, having seen what happens when officials get involved in the last 15 seconds of a basketball yeah. game in the kansas Sanford yeah. one, I don't want officials determining this game. If he blatantly, if it was really bad, I think you call it. I thought that was eh, questionable. It's not the kind of call that ruins the game. But it was unfortunate. Certainly, if you're a Florida fan, you're going to feel differently about that. And I understand. But uh, – <laughs> A hundred point. I mean, again, if you give up 102 points, you can't complain that one guy pushed off at the end of the game. You give up 102 points. Like you, you got to be able to play better defense than that. Uh, I think Colorado in the second half of this game, their points per possession. I don't have the exact number in front of me, but it was like over 1.8 or around 1.8. It was some unbelievable number. They were insanely efficient offensively. Uh, really fun, fun matchup here. Again, we, we said the Alabama Charleston is going to be the NBA style game, but we got it here with Colorado, Florida. But ultimately, uh, after the aftermath of these two games and the dust settled, uh, we saw the SEC continue to rack up losses. Kentucky yesterday, South Carolina yesterday. Now you have Auburn. Now you have Florida losing. It has been a really rough tournament for the SEC, and they're really riding hard on Tennessee to give them some credibility coming out of this uh, tournament. Yeah, um, and look, for Florida, man, it's just devastating. Like, I think back, I often think in these kind of games about the play before the play, like that three-pointer, who hit it? Was it Clayton? Yeah, Walter Clayton, the, the I mean, super deep three. When he just pulled up and buried, because that did that tie it? Uh, yes, point? it tied I'm it. I'm trying to remember now. There's so much basketball that's happened. Like, it tied it, and then Simpson won it, yeah. And then Simpson won it right after that, and it was just like, you just hate that for Walter Clayton, because that was, oh, literally just, so, that's what's popping up on my TV right now as we see that. Um, and so, Andy, I, I love your point, too, that it was, KJ Simpson's shot was very Kawhi Leonardy mm -hmm. uh, with with the way that bounced around there, but um, man, and six fifty six they're showing the end seven oh two. So yeah, it was exactly six minutes apart, Andy, that those things happened. Uh, Colorado's win also means, by the way, that we now have a slashy team, a team from the play-in games, winning a second game for the 12th time of the 13 tournaments where we've had 68 teams, Andy. So that is a, a remarkable number to me that out of the 13 tournaments where we've had 68 teams, 12 times we've had a slashy team win and move on to the round of 32. Five of those have made it at least to the Sweet 16, and two of them, VCU and UCLA, have gone to the Final Four. It also means the Pac-12, 4-0. 4 and 0 on the day they had two wins over the or on the tournament so far two wins over the SEC when Oregon beat South Carolina and of course this win here for Colorado over Florida really nice showing for the Pac-12 in their final year in the NCAA tournament wild stuff andy there are sort of three dukes in this tournament two duke mascots and the duke blue devils well you called it and now we're going to get it the dukes versus duke we're going to hit that in just a second Right after I tell you that this episode is brought to you by Manscaped, the spring cleaning champions. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below the waist grooming. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code locked on for 20% off and free shipping. Their fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads. Andy, I know you need that skin safe one, right? <laughs> On top of that dome. Yes. A right. standard one for taking a little off the top and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. Spring cleaning doesn't just apply to the nether regions. Get the full grooming experience with Manscaped Signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit plus Handyman Electric Face Shaver. Whether you're looking to craft your signature look or clean up that neckline, these are always the right tools for the job. So get 20% off and free shipping with code locked on at manscaped.com. Once again, 20% off and free shipping with the code locked on at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. Today's episode of Locked On College Basketball is also brought to you by Game Time. Folks, if your team is in the round of 32 and you're looking to get some last minute tickets to get out and watch them play, you they made it a little further than you expected. You want to try to find trying to find the best tickets, the best deals. You got to use Game Time. They have those deals for you. It is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all of the sports, as well as music, comedy, and theater events that are near you with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and 
their best price guarantee. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. With Zone Deals, you pick the section, Game Time picks the seats, and they give you big time savings. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time, where you can buy tickets in just seconds with two taps. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Terms apply. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right, Isaac. Twelve five upsets. We've talked about them just about every single day of the last ten days or so. When to pick them, how often to pick them, why to pick them, etc. If you had your bracket and you picked two 12-5 upsets this year, there is a chance if you're like me and don't ask me how I did on the 6-11s, but ask me how I did on the 12-5s on my bracket because 4-0 and oh for me, very, very fortunate to get two of those right. We saw two of them go down on Friday. James Madison takes down Wisconsin. We'll start with that one. We also had Grand Canyon take down St. Mary's, San Diego State, the five seed, did beat UAB, and then, of course, on Thursday, we had Gonzaga take down McNeese. But, Isaac, you mentioned it. James Madison, they start their season with a win over a prominent Big Ten program in Michigan State. They now uh, have, at the, at this point, their final game of the season is also a win over a Big Ten team, this, team, this time over Wisconsin. Wisconsin just couldn't take care of the basketball. Continuous turnover issues constantly. Uh, James Madison's swarming defense got to them, particularly in the second half. There was a lot of physicality, uh, a, a lot of contact throughout the game. They let them play, but uh, James Madison just looked like the tougher team and, and took down a Badgers team that uh, had some momentum coming into the tournament, but had also looked quite bad at times in the season. Very, A very kind of confounding year for the Badgers ends early here in March. Andy, here's the situation for me. This game is on the selection committee. James Madison is underseated as a 12. Mm -hmm. I think this shows their inability to truly understand what teams actually are because James Madison is not a 12. You know, you look at you look at teams like FAU that are overseeded mm -hmm. as a eight. You look yeah. at teams like Michigan State that are overseeded as a nine, right? Mm -hmm. And or eight, what are it? nine? They were yeah. nine, but yeah. And so it's like James Madison is not a 12. They are an 11, maybe a 10. And so not only is that not fair to them, Andy, who else is that not fair to? Wisconsin. Wisconsin, 100%. Mm -hmm. And as you said, what a weird, weird season for Wisconsin. We just what early to mid January, maybe right, just maybe late January, right before we got the top 16 reveal, we were talking about this team as a potential one seed. Mm -hmm. Then they lost eight of 11 down the stretch before going on that run last week in the Big Ten tournament, including knocking off Purdue. Andy, the topsy turvy Badger season ends the only way it could with a loss following that big run to James Madison, a team from the Sun Belt that, as you said, began their season with the Big Ten victory and began the NCAA tournament with the Big Ten victory. Big shouts, big congrats to the Dukes. Andy, I thought the perhaps the most critical sequence was at just under eight minutes to go in the game. Wisconsin cut it to six, had the ball, and Klesmet had a layup opportunity that just barely spun off. Yeah. But they go down and Friedel hits a three on the other end to push it back out to nine. So instead of four, it's nine. And then there was just never really another push from Wisconsin. Yeah, Dukes versus Duke going to be an incredibly fun game on Sunday. The Duke Blue what, Devils. What's your take. quick take on that? Any any shot for James Madison? I think they do have a shot. Yeah, I think they can if they can control the tempo in that game. If they can put a lot of pre pressure on the rim, go attack, uh, try to force either Filipowski to get into foul trouble or uh, just try to get some shots around the rim. I think there's a chance, but Duke's got a lot of athletes. They obviously have a ton of fantastic guard play. Uh, I would probably favor Duke in that one, uh, but my bracket says James Madison, so I'm going to roll with that for now. But it's it's going to be a, a fun matchup regardless of, of who takes who takes home the W in that one. Yeah. Man. Uh, Isaac, we had another 12-5 upset go down on the very last game here. We were recording, started this recording when there was about 10 seconds left. Grand Canyon officially seals the victory over St. Mary's in Spokane. There was a lot of happy faces in Spokane uh, watching St. Mary's go down. Grand Canyon first NCAA tournament win in school history. Bryce Drew has this team now advancing into the round of 32. Really good stuff from Grand Canyon. They were able to kind of 
The St. Mary's dictated the pace as they so often do, but Grand Canyon was able to roll with that. Uh, we saw Randy Bennett's team just continually use ball screen actions to attack the rim, even though it wasn't working. And there was, a, I think it was the under eight, maybe media timeout in the first half, or maybe the under four. Randy Bennett, when he was interviewed on the sideline, and he basically said, we're going to continue to just keep attacking the rim, even though they're blocking our shots. That's like a direct quote from what Randy Bennett said. And the man did not lie. His team continued to just relentlessly go at the rim and they continued to get their shots blocked or continued to miss shots. It yeah. felt like they didn't have a, a, an alternate game plan here. Uh, Grand Canyon pulled away in the second half, tying Grant Fat Foster. Phenomenal game from him. Uh, I really like this Grand Canyon team. I, I think they are going to have their hands full with the athletes at Alabama unquestionably, but I would not be surprised if they put up a tremendous fight in that game. Uh, Andy, I was laughing because uh, Jervis Williams in the chat said the second best basketball program in Arizona just won. Woohoo. So, uh, and Jervis is an Arizona fan for mm -hmm. those who are unaware. Andy, here's the one thing I, I'm right with you on Tyon Grant Foster. Love him, but I've got two things I'd like to see him clean up. Eight of 14 from the free throw line today, mm -hmm. six turnovers, one assist. Mm -hmm. Got to get those two things under wraps if they want to have a shot against um, Arizona as, or excuse me, Alabama, as you were talking about there. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, as for the other 12 5, we almost, Andy, almost did get another one. San Diego State looked like they were just going to kind of cruise. UAB really kind of came back, ended up losing by four. Jaden Ladee had an absolute day, Andy, going for 32. Speaking of going for a whole crap ton of points, finally, 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 Purdue has put behind them what happened last year. Andy, Zach Eady with the performance that just the second time has it happened since 1976. What was the numbers? We'll get to it in just a second. Right after I tell you that this episode is brought to you by our good friends at Nissan who give you this bracket highlight. You ready? Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. The Colorado Buffaloes can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves after dropping 102 points in a nail-biting victory over Florida. They're now set to make a run to the end NCAA tournament sweet 16 with an upcoming matchup on um, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. Yep. With Marquette. So great stuff there. So take the Nissan rogue or pathfinder or Armada and go find your next big adventure shop. Nissan USA.com. Andy, I want to get to talking about, we just mentioned San Diego state. Let's talk about uh, a team that did not make it to the final four last year. And that was Purdue just very quickly want to say congrats to them for getting the win and just putting it behind them. Grambling. Look, they, they were being physical and aggressive and kept it respectable for a little bit of the first half. And yeah. then there, there, there was just too much. Honestly, I hate the way refs adjudicate Zach Eady, like the way they ref him, like there've got to be more fouls called. I know he's big. But yeah. when dudes are hanging on him, yeah. like playing bowling into the ground, barrel full of monkeys or whatever, it's like, come yeah. on, call a foul. I know he's big, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean he can't have a foul uh, mm -hmm. in his favor. 30 points, 21 boards, three blocks, 11 of 17 from the field. And Andy, you noted Purdue won by 28. What was the fan duel line? 27 and a half. And Andy said, Vegas, man, they get it every time. So congrats to Purdue on uh, putting it behind them. And hopefully now that just kind of frees them, Andy, and they open it up going forward. But going back to a team that did make the final four, Andy, did we just see Dusty May coach his last game for the Boca Raton-based FAU Owls? Yeah, I think we might have. And this was a really close game. Uh, it looked for a while that they were going to pull it off. It looked for a while that they might move on with a questionable call, similar to what they did uh, last year against Memphis. But Multiple we, questionable calls. Yeah, that's just, there was some, some questionable officiating in that game, unquestionably. Uh, but Boo Booey, he, he did enough. 
Northwestern did enough. Chris Collins' team took care of business in overtime. 77-65 is the final score. Shout out to Northwestern. I think a lot of the conversation about this game and certainly how we started it is about FAU, their loss. Uh, you know, they didn't advance this year after advancing so far last year. What does it mean for Dusty May? Louisville's kind of sniffing around. Is that going to happen? And I think all of that is a worthy conversation. But Northwestern's in the tournament two years in a row. And now they're advancing in the tournament. Like this is a big deal for a program that doesn't have a lot of historic basketball success. I think Chris Collins is forever an underrated coach. I don't think he gets the attention and the love that he deserves. And I think a part of that is, is being kind of buried in the big 10 where there's uh, other programs that are much bigger brands, much bigger names around him. You know, Northwestern wasn't any worse than Michigan state or Wisconsin this year, but yet there's our teams that are going to get far more attention than they do. But uh, I thought it was a really good, a well-coached game. Uh, by Northwestern for them to get this victory w- with Boo Booey, and, and we'll see what it sets them up for. They got UConn here in this upcoming game. That is not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, yeah, I think Dusty Mays, there's a real chance that, that we have seen the end of him at FAU, and I'm curious what that could mean for, for FAU. Is this a program that falls back the way that like Loyola Chicago and VCU and some of those other programs have done George Mason uh, after making deep runs, or can they find a way to continue to have success, especially now that they have parlayed this success into being in, in a, at a better basketball conference in the American. I'll tell you this though, if Northwestern can beat UConn, Boo Booey is this year's Marquise Noel. Like oh, hands down. 100%. About it, right? Like unquestionably so. But Andy, I thought what, what was so crazy to me is, is we get to the end of regulation and I don't know what John L. Davis is doing, just mm-hmm. hanging out on the right wing, mm-hmm. waiting like he's going to jack up a three. You only need two points, my dude. You got three mm-hmm. seconds. Attack the rim, get fouled or make it, and get out of here with a win. And then that kind of mindset carried over into overtime, yeah. where FAU just had bad possession after bad possession after bad possession after bad possession. And at the same time, Northwestern's putting together good possession after good possession after good possession. And that's why they started overtime like with a 13 to two run, Andy. I mean, it was, or no, yeah. that was back in the, what was it, 16 to three. That was, that was the overtime run that started this thing. I mean, crazy, crazy stuff. Great win uh, for Northwestern, as you said, uh, despite the fact that the officials did them absolutely no favors down the stretch. Andy, we had a couple blowouts from some teams. Let's just shout them out. Baylor took care of Colgate in a big way. Marquette, uh, like, Kind of struggled a little bit in the first half. I was going to say, like, they in the, the um, Western Kentucky just went on a run second part of the first half, mm-hmm. and then Marquette flipped that quick in the Isaac, second I'll half. Admit, man, I almost pulled – I had a clip – uh, that we did on a show earlier this week where I was talking about the, the most likely 15-2 upsets and I talked about Western Kentucky. I was getting ready to pull that clip and then in the time it took me to find it, Marquette <laughs> had already gotten back up by 10 and I was like, oh, it's not worth it anymore. But yeah, That's no. funny because I was thinking about you as that was happening. I was like, Andy Wood called this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, crazy stuff. So so good work for Marquette. It's great to see Tyler Kolek back in action, by the way. Hopefully yeah. he's feeling good tonight and uh, they're, I'm sure they're taking good care of him. Uh, UConn. Man, they did what they needed to do. Um, but Andy, the game in the second section of games that I thought was really interesting today was New Mexico and Clemson. New Mexico was a very trendy 11 over six pick in part because they were favored at FanDuel by mm-hmm. one and a half points. But Andy, this we when we talk about Clemson Clemsoning, <laughs> they got on the upside of that today. This was the good version of Clemson where P.J. Hall and Ian Shefflin and Chase Hunter and just everyone's doing, Joe Girard, everyone's doing what they need to do. What what did you see out of this Clemson squad today? Yeah, they looked fantastic. Uh, And I think New Mexico really did not come into this game seeming as prepared as I expected them to be. And, you know, the 11 seeds were basically all of the bid thieves. Duquesne was was a bid thief in the A10. Oregon and NC State were the pack, you know, were the power conference bid thieves. Uh, and then New Mexico allegedly wasn't going to get in until they won the Mountain West Conference tournament. And uh, for some reason, I saw all four of the bid thieves and thought, I feel most confident in the Mountain West bid thief, despite the Mountain West having a rich history of not doing well in the NCAA tournament. Uh, I was not sure if Clemson, if like you said, what version of Clemson are we going to get? And and pretty much immediately. In this game, I mean, immediate was 30 to 11, uh, 10 minutes into this game. Like Clemson just showed that they were absolutely ready. Shefflin looked great. Hall looked great. Uh, And New Mexico, they shot under 30 percent from the field, like not from three, from the field in this game. Like they just they did not look ready to play at all. 
uh, kind of a, a confounding season for New Mexico ends early. Clemson gets to advance here. I, I'm very curious to see what they can do going forward because if they keep playing like this, they absolutely can continue advance. They have Baylor, I believe, that's is right. the three that's seed right. that they're playing. That that to me that's is a, is a game. game. I, I have a lot Baylor of games game circled coming up, but uh, Baylor Clemson is going to be a really good one. Well, the only game we haven't mentioned in the third segment was Duke, who had a pretty easy time with Vermont. Vermont put up a nice fight, but but not mm -hmm. really much there. Andy, what I loved, uh, I know we've got um, some Houston folks in the chat. It was no surprise to me at all that they just went nuts in this game. They were pissed after getting embarrassed by Iowa State yeah. last Saturday. Great for them. Andy, Utah State, TCU, an 8-9 game. TCU was favored by three and a half in this game. We said it this week that we thought this was a classic wrong team favored situation, and it clearly was. And great Osibor is a dude, but clearly we all should have known why because it's in the name that Isaac Johnson <laughs> would be the dude in this game 19 points, three blocks, that dirty mustache. Andy, uh, this dude averages six and a half points on the year. We, we see it all the time. Who is that rando that pops mm -hmm. up to be the, the leading score that you never expected or the second or third score? And they that helps Utah State overcome TCU. Big time win on Friday night. Yep. I, yeah, I, I think Isaac Johnson had 15 of his 19 in the second half, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, really nice performance from him. He's really big. He can space the floor. Only played about 15 minutes per game for Utah State this year, but clearly uh, can be a really valuable piece for them going forward. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I thought Utah State was underseeded. I thought TCU, I don't want to say they were overseeded necessarily, but like they beat Oklahoma at the end of the year. If they hadn't won that game, they might not have even made the Would tournament. Be. Like they That's barely right. snuck in to being in this field. We've talked about this a handful of times and it's part of the reason I'm intrigued by the Clemson Baylor matchup is uh, Clemson coach Brad Brownell has made his feelings about the Big 12 incredibly clear uh, these last couple of weeks thinking that they kind of gamed the net system by playing a lot of not very good teams in the non-conference and loading up with with high high margins of victories which helps you in the net ranking TCU is one of the teams he's talking about they played the sixth worst non-conference strength of schedule in the country not among tournament teams not among power six teams in the entire country the sixth worst strength of schedule i don't know how much that impacted tcu i actually looked into the of the tournament teams that played weak non-conference schedules the majority of them have won so i don't know if it means anything or not but certainly uh, thought that they were a fairly weak nine seed thought that uh, utah state was a very weak eight seed and that played out in a 16 point victory here for utah state their first win in the ncaa tournament isaac since 2001 they have lost 19 of their last 20 games in the NCAA tournament, just like the Mountain West. Boise State's 0-10, Utah State's one out of their last 20. Like This is a conference that has really struggled, but Utah State exercised some of those demons. Now they get a chance against Purdue. We'll see Isaac Johnson, seven-foot guy. Like He's not that strong, but we'll see if he can do something against Zach Eady. If nothing else, no. he, had a, he had a couple threes in this game. Maybe he can pull him away from the rim. I don't think there's much of a chance for Utah State, but hey, they won a game this year. That's That's a big story for them. Yeah, Andy, we look now ahead just very quickly. I'll just mention first tips of Saturday, uh, noon or 1245 Eastern time. But for some reason, the first two tips of the day are the Salt Lake City games. Mm -hmm. So Dayton and Arizona are going to tip at 1045 local there in the mountain time. Andy, that makes zero sense to me. But we get them first and then Gonzaga, Kansas. That'll be a super fun uh, early in the day tip. Very excited mm -hmm. for that. And then we get two sets of three games after that with the last tip of the day most likely to be Oregon and Creighton you said it earlier Oregon might have something for Creighton so we'll watch out there yeah, yeah Dana Allman going back I love, love that storyline he's going back he coached the Creighton for 15 years gets a chance to coach against his old school curious to see how that game plays out but Isaac we are going to be back on Saturday night after these games, after that Oregon Creighton game, after we see how this thing shakes out. So if you guys have, we love having you join us here live. If you haven't joined us live, do it tonight because it's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to be continuing to hang out every day that we have games here in the rest of the month of March. But that is going to wrap it up for us today and for this week, uh, at least this work week here on Friday. Thanks so much to those of you who have made this show your first listen or your first watch of the day. Join us on our Discord channel if you have not done so yet. It is free to join. There's a link in the show notes on on audio and video platforms. Uh, we're going to be back on Saturday getting you ready, getting you through this incredible slate of games as we whittle this thing all the way down to 16 by this time. 
48 hours from now, there will only be 16 teams left in college basketball's NCAA tournament. Thanks for listening. And until Saturday, 